Hey guys, what's going on? It's your favorite bleach consuming heating appliance microwave. And for today's video, we're gonna continue our Let's Talk About a series where I give you tips, guides, or problems within the games that I am currently playing. And in this video, I'm gonna discuss why you should choose Rook or Doc or both in the upper ranks of the game, Rainbow Six Siege. Now, Doc could be an extremely fun operator to play, especially if you get an epic revive off during the midst of a heated exchange. But knowing when to pick Doc or Rook is vital in the upper ranks of the game. I mean, of course, guys, you could choose whatever operator you want, but believe it or not, there is a reason to choose between the two GIGN anchors. For those of you that are kinda new to the game, an anchor is a term that is used to define an operator position within the team. Basically, it means you hold down one of the objectives and give cam callouts to your team while the attackers push their way toward the bomb site. It mostly consists of high armor operators such as Rook, Doc, Mira, or Echo, but depending on the map, Smoke and other operators can fulfill that position. Your goal as an anchor is to hold down a tight angle on a main breaching position, all the while helping your team a call out so that way they can rush back into the site if need be. It's a crucial part of the team and without one the attackers can push the bomb site and plant without anybody ever knowing that they were there. I'm sure you've lost because a rook decided to deuce out of the objective and left it wide open so that way he can roam for no reason without informing the team. Well this is exactly why players in the higher ranks have this position. Anyway so before getting into the loadouts or giving some of the general tips it's best to understand why you should play rook or doc. Generally the two GIGN brothers are the two operators to go to for the defense team as anchors. But which one is correct to play and should you choose both of them? Well I'm gonna break that down. Generally speaking, Rook is the best out of the two because his gadget is passive, meaning once you apply the armor to yourself or give it out to somebody, you can then forget about Rook altogether. But a Doc player is a little bit different. He has an active gadget, meaning he has to use it in order to contribute to the team gadget wise. Without his stem pistol, he's an exact copy of Rook. And in this guide, whenever I talk about anchors, the same could be said for both of them. Doc excels on maps that can get taken by the attackers from below or above. Sites like the Top of Canal or the Kitchen Chalet and even sites like Penthouse and Coastline. Whenever you can get grenaded or fused directly into the objective means that Doc is a viable pick for that site. Let's say you're on Chalet which is a very popular map in the Pro League and the upper ranks. A basic strat consists of clearing the trophy room via the garage below or clearing the dining room from above. Either way you could break open the floors and try to get a quick peek on the defenders. Doc excels in these type of locations because if somebody gets down it's rather easy to get you back into the fight. Now you may argue that headshots are the thing to do and I completely agree, but the difficulty in getting one when aiming from below or above increases dramatically. Because most of us are programmed to fire and hold angles at a head level on a horizontal playing field. Now think about that. Siege is one of the very first competitive games to offer vertical gameplay in multiplayer, which is why you see a lot of potato aim during vertical game in the pro league and amongst the good players. Therefore, the likelihood of them downing you is increased dramatically. The same can be said about getting frag grenade from below and above. Sites such as Basement in Oregon and Chalet are more suited toward a rook because there's there's no way to really open up the holes in the floors. Now depending on your rank, Doc may not be that great of a pick, because most of the deaths in the higher ranks are from headshots at a horizontal playing field. But that really shouldn't discourage you from picking Doc, because he could do really cool tricks like clearing out the claymore out of the blue hallway ladder in Clubhouse. It's kind of a common spot to plant a claymore at the top of the ladder to prevent the defenders from running up it and around to get that open flank on you. So you can have a Doc overheal himself to absorb the claymore so that way a Jaeger or a Bandit can flank the attackers. One last thing on whether or not to choose Rook over Doc is the team makeup, and this is really critical. If your team consists of a Jaeger, Bandit, a Pulse, and a Valkyrie, then you might not want to get a Doc because most of the time they'll be out of your line of sight. Remember, the main reason to play a Rook, Doc, Echo, or Mira is to hold down the objective. If your team has a ton of roamers, then Rook will be your best bet because how will you be able to heal them if they're so far away or on a different floor? Anyways, let's get into Rook and Doc's loadout. They both carry three main primaries and two secondaries. So which weapons are the best to choose and why? Well, the MP5 is probably one of the best weapons in the game because of its low recoil and decent damage. But what makes it truly special is the beloved ACOG. Now I get that most players on the PC prefer the ACOG than on the console, but a three armor tight angle holding Docker Rook with an ACOG is definitely a force to be reckoned with. So personally, I choose the MP5 with the flash hider 90% of the time, unless I wanna troll everybody with the P90. The P90 has a lot of rounds and decent accuracy, but its spray pattern is worse. And if you need 50 rounds to take down an attacker, then you should probably rethink what you're aiming at. So far, so suppressors aren't that great or you use in the meta. But Rogue Knight did an amazing breakdown of the suppressor, which I'll put a link for you in the description below if you're interested in that, you should check it out. And I don't really use the muzzle break, I prefer the flash hider because it's more consistent for me. Now the shotgun is great for close quarter combat, but again, in the higher ranks, it's all about opening up the sight and clearing it with tight angles and quick peaks. By the time you get up close to use it, you will most likely die. So again, the MP5, flash hider, vertical grip, and ACOG is the most commonly used loadout for Doc and Rook. For your sidearms, it really depends on 
what you prefer. More rounds in the mag or heavier hitting bullets, both of which have their pros and cons. Both also suck ass at opening up holes in the walls. So it really comes down to personal preference. I enjoy using the magnums because it's more of like a BM kind of a thing. I mean, when you get that sweet one tap headshot, it feels so damn good. You can go into chat and be like, LOL, noob. Doc rolls with two barbed wire and one deployable shield. Most of the time you'll need to bring barbed wire because it can really slow down the enemy push as opposed to the deployable shield. You can also use it for sound cues to know if the attackers are pushing a specific area. The deployable shield has a few uses like blocking off a doorway so a twitch drone cannot access the room and take down a black mirror or it could even block shots from the drone hole in the trophy room. But generally it isn't that great of a gadget. Barbar -bar will be your main go-to and I promise you can never have enough of it. For Rook you will always want to bring your impact grenades so that way you can open up vaultable holes for you and your teammates. Sometimes you won't have a shotgun on your team to open up those crucial holes but impact grenades can do a better job than just shooting it with your SMGs. So what do you do with Doc and Rook Microwave? What's the whole strategy behind them? I touched on it before at the beginning and basically your whole job is to sit tight in an objective, watch over it and keep an eye out on cameras to give your team info on the attacker's positions. Learning to use cameras as an anchor can literally win you the game, especially if you have a Valkyrie on your team. You need to inform your team of where they spawn and watch the attackers as they work their way toward the bomb site. Your job is like essentially playing Overwatch and feeding your roamers info. I know it could be a bit boring, but if you know every room and help your team by saying which direction they're going from via your compass, you will win more games, I promise you. It's also how a great deal of really good players learn how to play the game. Generally speaking, it forces you to learn every room and helps you learn where and how the enemy will come from. It also helps you train where their head will be. So if you hold a super tight angle and wait for them to peek you, it'll give you the best chance of winning that engagement unless they're Brazilian Ash players, and we all know how that goes. Now once you get a better grasp of angles within the objective, then you can branch off into roamers, but that's a whole other subject. When things start to get tighter time-wise or somebody dies, you can then open up a bit and watch the bomb site more closely because you'll have somebody else watching the cams. So be ready to defend your ground if that happens. Now everything that I previously said can be applied to Rook as well. Once you lay down your armor, you can then pop in and out of cams after reinforcing everything. Again, both Rook and Doc are identical in armor, speed, and weapons. The loadout should be exactly the same and the only difference is what map or location you are currently playing on. Now you might be asking yourself, is it okay to run both Rook and Doc microwave? I need to know this and the simple answer is of course. But it might be best to pick up a mirror instead of having both on your team because she offers different options. While having both may seem great, you're kind of stacking your protection gadgets and not offering enough damage dealing or position holding gadgets. Having two MP5s and ACOGs is amazing, but again, try to pick different operators to offer a more evenly spread of gadgets. So finally, some general tips and stuff to think about while you're playing the GIGN brothers are, number one, know when to pick Rook or Doc. Again, it really boils down to what map you're playing and what objective you're holding. Number two, Hold tight angles and predict where the attacker's head will be. Most of the time, it's standing because it offers the fastest peak. Number three, learn every map and use the basic cams to follow the attacker's strategy. Knowing if they're gonna go straight for the garage door in the basement of Chalet or having two people push the wine cellar can help your team out tremendously. You can then have everybody rotate to different positions. Number four, when giving callouts, try to use the compass. Saying right there doesn't really help anybody. Number five, kinda going back to number four, whenever you're giving callout locations, try to base it off the roamers position. If you can't look at the compass, then give out the position via the roamer's view. Now what I mean by this is like, let's say a Jaeger's looking at the camera and you're looking directly at him. If you call out to your left, well that's his right. So giving a wrong call will needlessly lose you a player and will most certainly piss off that Michaelis Jaeger main. Number six, Stay in the objective unless you're doing a strategy in which you retake it like Kitchen on Skyscraper. Kitchen is a little bit difficult to hold tight angles with because it can be opened up from the outside of all sorts of locations. So generally a strategy is to let the attackers open it up and then you retake it once they plant the diffuser. Number seven, now this is a really big one for like any type of operator, but I need to add this. Don't try to hold the same angle as another player. I can't stress this enough. Most of the time it spells disaster because you can easily team kill him due to what we call the ACOG blindness. Basically you're vision is so tunneled you won't see a friendly run into the path of your bullets. The reverse can be true as well. If you're holding an angle and a bandit comes to help you out then tell him to back off so there's no chance to get a team kill. But have him ready in case you do go down so that way he can get the trade off. Number 8. Be a team player and for god's sake if you're a rook please spam your gadget or button or whatever it is so that way you can drop your armor and everybody can do their job as soon as possible. Number 9. 
always go for headshots while using the ACOG. You would think that'd be a pretty generic tip, but a lot of people like to go for body or dick shots. I don't know why. And finally, number 10. Again, guys, have fun. It may be boring to play Rook or Doc, but it's extremely vital if you guys want to rank up. Anyways, that's all I got for you. I hope you enjoyed the small guide on which anchor to play if you were choosing Rook or Doc. If you guys enjoyed this, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up, or if there's some way that I can improve this series, then let me know in the comments below. I guess with this video, I'll be reviving this series, so every Friday, I'll be doing one of these for you. I've also got back into Twitch streaming late nights again, so be sure to follow me on Twitter where you can hear me cry about the hot, sticky messes that humans leave inside of me because they keep forgetting to put the lids on their foods. I'll also announce when I'm live on Twitch there too. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Catch us up. Bottom down. Good job. Oh, he's down, he's down, he's down. Good job. Man. That's good. Ash is pushing fire place. I got Ash. Cap down, Cap down. Cap down. Cap down. Last operator standing. Blue. Nice. Nice. Oh, nice. Mission successful.